Have you ever wanted to make a data set PCF? If you'd like to see an example, I'm going to show you how you can do a virtual component using the Fluent UI details list. Let's see how it's done. So, first of all, we can start with a PAC PCF in it. So that's the CLI and I have it available inside my Visual Studio Code because I've installed the Power Platform Visual Studio Code extension. So PAC PCF in it, the namespace would be Dynamics and the name is Dev Bootcamp for my PCF. I'm going to choose the type dataset and the framework that's React. What I have to do now is to start the npm install. And while that's running, I, let's have a look inside the package JSON. You can see there that's already predefined the React and Fluent UI version that you can use, and also uh, the other dev dependencies that you need. Inside the manifest, we can see that something different. Until now, we had a standard control. Now we have the control type virtual. And we have as resource the platform library with React and Fluent UI. Inside the index.ts, it's pretty much everything the same we had before with the standard control. Uh, just let me change a little the linting rules so following the blog from Scott Duro. You'll see how you can avoid some linting problems here. Um, so we have a class component implementing a React control. That's the difference to the standard control. And from the update view, we have to return now a React element. That's also a difference to the standard one. But that's pretty much it. We don't have to destroy anything. We can just start with our um, with implementing our component. So we have now a data set example. I've renamed it. I delete everything because I'm going to implement some uh, some function component. And uh, I just define a type shortcut for the data set. In define the props containing the data set that I need. And I start implementing the function component. I'm going to call it data set example. The props would be of type, oh, I forgot to rename it. So it's uh, I data set example props. And this function will return a GSX element and just return some something, some empty node for now. So we have the root of our implementation. Just let me rename this to dataset. We can go now to the index.ts, search for the update view, use the new function we've created, function component, and define the new properties that we have to pa pass. So we have the data set. And the value we take from the data set parameters and the data set. Delete the not needed properties. And we can try to bundle npm run build. And npm start watch. Let us have a look how it's looking inside harness. 
Looking good. It's not an error, but I don't have a content right now. We can go now to implement the function component itself. So we're going to use a component from the Fluent UI that's called details list. And that one we're going to need a few properties like items and colors. That's the basic. So let's define the items. So we're going to take the items in a state. We use the use state hook. And the same we're going to do with the columns. Use state with an empty array. And we're going to use a use effect and we'll execute this function each time the data set is changing. So I have the second parameter on the data set. So inside the user help, I have to set the columns first. And um, I take the columns from the data set and I need to sort them first. So column one and column two are parameter of the sorting function and that's column one order minus column two order. And when that's done, we can map these columns to something that details list understands. So we're going to return another object containing the name. That's the column display name. We have the field name. That's the column name. We have the min width and that's the column visual size factor. And we have the key with a column name. The second one would be the items. So we take all, always the records from the sorted record IDs because that's the one in, in the right order. We take from the data set the records for the each ID. We take the attributes in the order of the columns. And for each one, we have to calculate the formatted value for this column. Uh, so now we have an array with attributes and we're gonna take it inside one object with the key would be the get record ID. We have the raw everything inside and for each attribute, we're gonna pass this formatted IDs from the uh, attributes object and set items and that's it. We've already calculated now the items and the columns, and we pass that to the details list. One optimization is pretty important right now because the update view is called quite a few times and we have to return an element each time. It's important to go inside the component and wrap everything inside React memo. We'll take care that the function component will be called only when the property is changed. We can go on to npm run build. And just check the npm start watch. And it's looking good. We have some example data that automatically passed from the harness. I won't going to debug here because it's pretty hard and we are missing some metadata. We're going to upload that in the environment using the pack PCF push with the publisher Diana in my case. And I go on a form, unfortunately, still on the old customizing and add a subgrid. In my case, I go to account and I'm going to add the orders. Related records and I have the orders there. I want to show the search box and I want to have all the views. And I'm going to go to the controls and add my details list. Control dev bootcamp.
no other parameters there for now. So we are ready to save and publish. Now let's go to the app containing the account and let's play it. If you open an account now, we can go to the Dev Bootcamp. And what you see here, it's not my PCF right now because you see some paging there. I haven't implemented it. So we can see it when we refresh. Now it's our PCF that we've just developed. We don't have a paging right here, uh, but we also we've lost the orders uh, um, view and the search. So we need to do that too. We're going to go to the manifest, search for the data set and add this CDS data set options. We just have to save and upload this again. Refresh. Of course, it's taking much longer normally. And uh, now you can see that I can switch the views. And I'm also able to filter the data and search for it. So we have just used a few lines of code and we have already something pretty similar with uh, with the default grids that we know from the more driven apps. And you might think we are already done, but we are not. And if you want to see what you have to uh, what you still have to take care of if you want to implement something professional. Uh, you can have a look to my blogs. Um, I have a data set category where you can see all the stuff, but I would recommend to start with a series, my checklist for a data set this year using Fluent UI, where I have gathered everything you have to think of. So you have to take care of the header. It shouldn't disappear when you scroll. So you need a sticky header. Uh, you should take care of the height of the grid because it's different for the subgrid and in the home area. So for, for the sitemap, you should take care of the footer because the default behavior is that the footer is coming up if there are not enough records. Uh, you should take care of the columns because just have a look how the grid would look like if um, the width of customized are not enough. So I have a lot of space there, which I don't want to. Um, there are some layout mode, but it's still not the standard behavior of the grid. So basically I just took the whole free space available. Uh, after I calculate the the whole width of the columns and split it on each column. Um, also, we should care of paging, which we didn't implement yet. We should take care of sorting and translation and stuff like that. So there are still a few stuff to take care of until we can release that for production.